Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-watershed production. Welcome to Elemental Chemistry 101. I'm your halogen, Aaron Bliss, while floating next to me is your inert gas, Mike Large. Good evening, all. Welcome to Late Night Large, which clearly is on the theme of Mike. Periodic table. So tell me, Mike, assuming you attended school, what do you remember of the periodic table? Or chemistry generally? I actually used to be quite good at it. I found it quite interesting, so... Yeah? What, what did you find interesting about chemistry? The fact I was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked I liked the things I was naturally good at, and then... We're not talking about that kind of chemistry. The other thing... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. Grid of elements. <laughs> Assorted by numbers. They're like atomic numbers. Do you remember what the numbers stood for? Uh, there's a couple of numbers. I'm saying there. this because I can't really remember. I know who will know. Our sponsor. So, Mike, if I said the name Dmitry Mendeleev to you... If you said... Dmitry Mendeleev to that's you? That's the bloke that put together the periodic table. Really? How did you know that? Don't know. Is anything to do with the tab I have here on Wikipedia? <laughs> Can I see anything? No. No? Well, then. So, how did you know that? I don't know. <laughs> some things stick, some things don't. Most oh, really? things don't. <laughs> a lot of things day. Yeah, no, yeah, he was uh, he was credited as drawing up the first periodic table, official periodic table, and also left uh, spaces for elements yet to be discovered from obviously the time that he drew it up. Esteemed man in the history of sciences. Top grower. Top, <laughs> top grower. I heard also there's a rumor, rumor has it. Rumor. Go on. That he was uh, he was an exceptional teacher and he he used to deliberately despite obviously his uh, infamy and I'd imagine fairly comfortable financial security. He used to ride third class on trains just so he could talk to the regular people, the farmers and the and the laborers and stuff to um ask them sort of how they went about things and teach them basic scientific principles help them in their everyday lives I'm sure he learnt from them also yeah what an altruist eh what a guy yeah uh, okay. bit like me no nothing like you Mike as we're, as we're talking about our ign- <laughs> as we're talking about our ignorance complete ignorance really of the uh, the, the periodic table of elements why what do they say w- about ignorance yeah. ignorance is bliss uh, hey. I, I'd, I'd go as far as to say as ignorance is bliss but stupidity is large thank you <laughs> So, we've just proved we're pretty ignorant of the periodic table. Why don't we go through as many elements as we can remember? Jeez. Just off the top Christ. of our heads. We're not using Wikipedia now. Uh, we don't have to, It doesn't have to be in order, but how many can we come up with? I'll count them on my hand. Okay, the obvious ones. Hydrogen... Can we start with the, the noble gases? The, I think we should. Go on. Okay. Right, actually, no, why would we start there? Exactly. Let, okay. Well, I, don't, I, I can't say in order. Through. Go on. Any ones you can think of. Hydrogen, helium, helium, oxygen. Should we do ah, alphabetically? <laughs> A's. A's. Uh, okay. Uh, argon. I... Is argon a? Yeah, but uh, I on. haven't got any more A's. Let's <laughs> say B then. Is, uh, is beryllium? Am I thinking? Am I just making that up? Beryllium. No, it sounds right. That sounds about right. Bromine. No, 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 no I, I think, think you're making that one up. Shut oh, up. Uh, Why don't you come up with one then? B? I can't think of any Bs. What about C? Carbon, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, calc- uh, calcium. Yeah, calcium is uh, one, yeah. It, is, co- is, is cobalt uh, an element? I don't know. This is, uh, this is more difficult I'm than gonna, I think I'm gonna you go thought. With, I'm going to go with cobalt, anyway. I think this is more difficult than you thought, naming these. Can you think of any for D? No. No. <laughs> e? <laughs> What's the next letter we can think of? Francium is that one? No, I think Francium no, is. I think you're wrong. Okay, fine. Go on, I can't think of any F. What's after F? Shut up. G. 
so it's not just the periodic <laughs> table, but the alphabet that you're ignorant of. Come on, G. It's been a while since I've had to do the alphabet. It's <laughs> uh, our brilliant state school system. G's. In all its glory. G- it's all about the G's. It's a G thing. <laughs> I can't think of any G's. You can't think of any G's? No. Oh, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I could. <laughs> H has got to be the most obvious well, with hydrogen, done, helium. Well, we've done them, yeah. Um, iron. Iron, yeah. It, iodine, no, is that a. No. no. I can't name any more. Well, I well, can probably name some, but not. This is difficult. Okay, yeah, that, that, well, that's why I said don't categorise them. Just come up with ones you know off the top of your head. Come on. Okay, oh, silver, God. gold, bismuth. Uh, lead, so tin, bismuth. That comes. That came. To, that came straight. <laughs> well, obviously, I've. Uh, I, I took a glance over the periodic table oh, the last couple of days. Here we go. But I'm not sad enough to memorise all of them. Really? Right? So you're just naming like obvious ones, like silver and gold, and bismuth just comes to you. Bismuth is a pretty memorable name, though, for an element. I think. Come on, okay. Well, you what said what about the noble gases that you love so much? Why don't you? I don't know. Any <laughs> well, you just bullshitting. Things. I was just thinking of parts of the periodic table. Oh my god, you were bullshitting. Uh, isn't no, there's... xenon. Xenon's a, an element. Yeah, that sounds right. Radium. Yeah. Plutonium. You say oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take your point. Obviously, all the elements have d- various chemical properties, but always the coolest thing about elements that I always used to look for first as a kid I think uh, was if they had pretty extreme freezing, melting or boiling points don't know about you Mike yeah it was definitely well yeah it's the first thing you look for because it's what makes them cool I always loved mercury the fact that it was liquid metal yeah it, it's, it's was it the cool. only was it the only metal that could stay liquid at room temperature yeah yeah the so. only natural liquid I metal think it was yeah yeah, well, just looking at the extreme ends of the scale as far as uh, boiling points, isn't it that we're we're looking yeah. at here? Yeah, the the extreme ends of the scale, as far as we can see, and any science boffins who listen to this show really apologise for absolutely desecrating your passion. But helium, we think, has the lowest boiling point in the in the list of elements. Uh, it actually boils at negative 268.6 degrees which is only Celsius. About 5 degrees off absolute, absolute zero, zero so. so what it means is that helium can only exist as a liquid with probably less than a 5 degree window there's only a 5 degree window of temperature that it could exist as a liquid which is pretty incredible so that's the extreme end of that scale in that uh, helium will probably never be seen as a liquid in any circumstance, really. And at the opposite end, we have tungsten, which, which will also probably never be seen. Which, which will probably again never be seen uh, at as as a gas or as a liquid. Probably very unlikely to be seen as a liquid, but as a gas, almost certainly not. Uh, tungsten, which, as most people know, is used in light bulbs for obvious reasons its uh, capability of withstanding extreme temperatures. We never quite comprehended just how extreme until we took a quick look on here. We believe it, it is the highest temperature boiling point on the periodic table at 5,660 degrees Celsius, which, would you believe, uh, means that it could actually just about survive in its current state as a solid on the surface of the sun which is pretty crazy and I think it's it's melting point was actually higher than the boiling point of gold really it for those of you interested we we uh, we understand from the National Geographic site that the the average temperature on the surface of the sun is around about five and a half thousand degrees Celsius which, you know, to us sounded a, a little bit low for the sun, but then when you consider that the core of the sun is more like 28 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is, you know, obviously many million degrees Celsius as well, so there's a little bit of a difference between those. I wonder what the core of the Earth, the temperature of the core of the Earth is. The core of the Earth is not even as hot as the surface, surface of, of the, the sun. sun. Not far off. So, Mike, 
we find a bit of a fan page for amazing elements. See how many of these we uh, we agree with. Now we were talking about Mercury earlier. Mentioned it before. Yeah. And how it's cool. Is it just me, or whenever you think of Mercury, do you picture the T one thousand? No, it's just you. <laughs> you bloody idiot! Mercury is cool. <laughs> for That's obviously, right. for the reason obviously that you just mentioned. It's a yes, liquid metal, it, like it, you said before. The fact that it's the only metal that's liquid at room temperature, and it, it's, I also always thought it was funny as well because it was obviously used in thermometers. Yeah, it was. It's not used as widespread in thermometers now because of the fact that it's highly toxic, <laughs> which also makes it very cool. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine inhaling mercury vapor? <laughs> I guess that would be not a very pleasant experience. experience. No, I, I wouldn't have thought so. I wonder if you'd turn into like the T-1000. <laughs> Next. Mike, here's, here's a favourite of yours, magnesium. Magnesium. The uh, eighth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. And obviously it's, like we said before, it's the one where you'd use most at school. For uh, Because it ignites in oxygen with many many other elements yeah and, and it makes it's a, a pretty cool glow good flame yeah so. no it's great it's, it's what I think they used to call it volatile it's, it's a volatile reaction that it it creates with most things when combined with oxygen magnesium did you know Mike is needed for more than 300 biomechanical Bio <laughs> biochemical even reactions okay. of the body I did, and it I did helps now. maintain regular muscle and nerve function Keeps yeah. heart rhythm steady, supports healthy immune system, and keeps your bones strong. That's the important one. Jesus. It also helps regulate blood sugar levels, promotes normal blood pressure, and is known to be involved in energy metabolism and synthesis of protein. Pretty important one. Who would have known that it would do that much good at in the school human body? when you're playing with it? You just know you want to set fire to it. <laughs> yeah. Mike, did you ever used to? Did you ever try milk and magnesium when you were a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the taste? No. Because it was like liquid chalk. That's how I remember it tasted. Mike, next. what about the Krypton factor? Krypton factor, yeah. Krypton is uh, is the next one, number eight on this list that we found that and didn't put together ourselves. <laughs> well, yeah, Mike, you don't need to say where it is on the list. Let's just discuss it. It's, uh, well, the atmosphere of Mars apparently contains a little bit of Krypton. As does ours. Apparently. Mm. Oh, okay. Am I reading that right? I think so. One part per million. Yeah, but what's it useful for? What's Krypton Absolutely used for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is Krypton used? I don't know. What is it used in our for? Own world? Ah. Ah, window companies. There you go. Apparently, uh, many window companies now use Krypton to fill sealed panes in order to reduce energy waste. There you go. And the gas can also be used to detect leaks. I guess that's pretty useful. Yeah, what kind of leaks? <laughs> uh, well, you're, you're not going <laughs> to use it to detect toilet leaks, are you? Well, you might. In industrial sealed containers, okay. So, Mike, Mary Curie, the, famed, yeah. uh, the, the physicist, obviously, who died from, I believe, radiation, radiation poisoning. poisoning yeah. The element that's named after her, curium. Curious. Tell us about curium. Oh. It was named after Marie Curie. Well done, Mike. Off you go. He grows, so he grows. it's uh, <laughs> it's so radioactive it glows in the dark. I guess that's why you uh, rub it on your. Indeed, <laughs> that is exactly why. Uh, apparently, most normal individuals will never encounter curium as it does not occur in nature, and is only actually produced in very limited quantities. That's a shame, because it had so much potential. Ah, oh, well. Oh, mm, what about strontium? What about strontium? What have you heard about strontium? What have I heard about strontium? What's the word on the street? Because uh, rumour has it. Groomer has it. <laughs> rumour! It looks a little, I've got to say, it looks a little bit like cocaine. It does look a little bit like cocaine, that's what I was just about to say. No, they probably don't anymore, but I believe it was used, something to do with making TVs. The original cathode ray tubes, ray tubes in the back of TVs. It was used to prevent X-ray emission, so I'm guessing to keep any potential X-rays from getting out. Yeah, it, probably it, it's probably not the case anymore, or is it? 
I wouldn't have thought so with plasma screen TVs and what have you. I, no. I, I don't think cathode ray tubes are used as a, no. are used anymore. Di- wow, there's an interesting line here. The metal can be, repair- be prepared by electrolysis of the fused chloride mixed with potassium chloride. He grows. So, chlorine. I think we all know the main use of chlorine, Mike. Swimming pools? <laughs> yeah, ster- <laughs> sterilising swimming pools. It's the first thing that comes to my head. Almost all water supplies are, usually have chlorine in them. I guess including the the treated water that we get in our taps. It's also extensively used in the production of paper products, dyes, textiles, petroleum products, medicines, antiseptics, insecticides, food solvents, paints, plastics, and many other consumer products. Pretty useful one, then. Hmm. Organic chemistry demands much from chlorine, both as an oxidising agent and in substitution, since it often brings many desired properties in an organic compound when substituted for hydrogen, as in one form of synthetic rubber. Well, there you go. Learn something new every day, don't you? What about aluminium, Mike? Oh, I'll tell you something about aluminium. I mean, that must. You know, when we were trying to name them, we forgot aluminium. Yeah, that's or, what. Or as our as our American friends might say, aluminum. Aluminum. Well, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? In, if we if we talk about our consumerist culture, where would we be without aluminium? Nowhere. I swear. Yeah, well, I mean, because it's so lightweight, malleable, uh, non-toxic, obviously, always helps. Although its electrical conductivity is only about 60% that of copper, it is used in electrical transmission lines because of how lightweight it is. Although it's soft and lacks strength, but alloyed with small amounts of copper, magnesium, silicon, manganese, or other elements, imparts a variety of useful properties. And the alloys of aluminium are of vital importance in the construction of modern aircraft and rockets. Well, there you go. Zirconium. Have you heard of zirconium before? Nope. I, I've i only heard it, of it in the context of zirconias, i.e. The, the jewel kind of diamond look-alike things. Mm. Uh, apparently, though, it's happen. used extensively by the chemical industry where corrosive agents are employed. As an alloying agent in steel, in surgical appliances, photo flash bulbs, explosive primers, rayon spinnerets, lamp filaments, it is used in poison ivy lotions in the form of the carbonate as it combines with arushiol. Ah, uh, the impure oxide zirconia, yeah, there we go, zirconium oxide, has a high index of refraction and is used as a gem material. That's where I know it from. Congratulations. Well done. And the uh, the other amazing materials. On Bit this of a strange list. one. Yeah, uh, the elements one twelve to one eighteen. Oh, of course. Why, Mike? Because I have no idea. I, I can't even read them. Read them. Tell, well, tell, they, you they, read. they all begin with U, don't they? Yeah, I can tell they're, you that. They're all the they're all the U elements. Unendium, unentrium, unenquadium, unenpentium, unenhexium, unenseptium. And in anoxium, <laughs> they are relatively new to the periodic table. In fact, I think some of them were only starting to be added when I was still at secondary school. And uh, they are completely man-made we, uh, by bombarding specific atoms of one element with specific atoms of another, thereby separating each into an entirely new element only stable. Sorry, I'm clearly reading the sentence completely out of context. In comprising an entirely new element, only stable for a fraction of a fraction of a second. It's mental. It is pretty ins- insane, isn't it? Fraction of a fraction of a second. So these elements would have no properties whatsoever in reality. So what the hell is the point of them? <laughs> Just discovery, really, I guess. You say discovery... And don't ever criticise science you say, much. You say discovery, we've made them. They're completely man-made. Yeah, but surely that's that's even more. For of a what discovery, reason? Isn't it? Just a new material. We didn't discover it. We made it. Not yeah, like we found it. Well, okay, making something new. No, but you know, you didn't make it, did you? Made you just it. separated atoms from other atoms for no purpose. Not really. Just literally discovery for its own sake. Wow. Well, I'm really glad they exist. Get your stinking rat out! It's late night, large. So, let's talk about the various periods in the periodic table. <laughs> Go on. 
What about the alkali metals, Mike? What can you tell me about them? What about the alkali metals, Aaron? Okay, well, let, <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Could, it, it, they're made they're of reactive. a thing... They're, they're, they're highly sort of, reactive, that's all. Uh, but they don't occur free in nature. I couldn't remember that bit. No, they include classics like lithium, obviously, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and oh, what's cesium and what, what's that last one? Francium. All oh, right, okay. Pipe down. Yeah. See, I, I seem to remember somebody claiming that that didn't exist. You're trying to give it the bigger. <laughs> Always, as with all metals, the uh, the alkali metals are malleable, ductile, and are good conductors of heat and electricity. The alkali metals are softer than most metals, and cesium and francium, uh, uh, francium rather, are the most reactive elements in this group. Alkali metals can Ooh. explode if they're exposed to water. Fun. That's that's very cool. Okay, Mike. Alkali earth metals. What's the difference between? these and the alkali metals I don't know what is they're the still very reactive and again yeah. they're not found free in nature but it is literally they have an oxidation number of plus two apparently I'm not going to pretend yeah. I know what that means the transition metals Mike we're not going to go through all of these because there There's are lots. 38 elements well in groups 3 through 12 of the periodic table classified as transition metals these include classics such as tungsten, iron, hey, tungsten. Go on. manganese, cobalt, gold, copper, mercury, and platinum, and zinc. Zinc. The, yeah, these are the, these are some of the classic metals that we all know and love. Zinc's another one to play with at school. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Zinc. It was zinc the. Uh, little strips yeah I was yeah. going to say yeah, I remember those mm. they were great the interesting thing about transition metals is that their valence electrons or the electrons they use to combine with other elements are present in more than one shell this is the reason why they often exhibit several common oxidation states there are three noteworthy elements in the transition metals family these are iron cobalt and nickel and they are the only elements known to produce a magnetic field. Yeah, but they're not quite as hard as tungsten, are they? No. <laughs> well, who is, really? <clears throat> OK, the seven elements that classified as other metals... Other metals? That would be pretty, pretty crap yeah, if you were that it, element, it, it's, it's a pretty, If you were one of these elements, a, you'd be pretty pissed off, It's kind you? of an afterthought, isn't it? What should we call these? Other metals. Oh, we, we're going home. We'll just call them other metals. They're ductile and malleable. Uh, but they are not the same as the transition elements. These elements, unlike the transition elements, do not exhibit variable oxidation states, and their valence electrons are only present in their outer shell. These have a solid, relatively high density, and are opaque. And again, it refers to their oxidation numbers, which means nothing to me, I'm afraid. No, I'm not sure I know what it means either. But that contains other classic metals, such as the aforementioned aluminium, tin, lead and bismuth. There you go. What about metalloids, Mike? Oh, arsenic. <laughs> wow. Silicon. Woo. <laughs> Kinky. The, well, well, metalloids are the elements found along the stair step line that distinguishes metals from non-metals. Metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals. Some are semiconductors. The, this means that they can carry an electrical charge under special conditions. This property makes metalloids useful in computers and calculators. And boobs. I wondered when that was coming. <laughs> That's what she said. <sighs> what? <sighs> okay, we're on to the non-metal elements, Mike. Why don't you tell us about them? Again, I think this is a, a pretty crap name for a, for a group of elements. It does seem again. I, would, it's not, I don't think it's quite as bad as other metals. <laughs> But, I mean, non-metals, they haven't really... I mean, t metalloids, that's... Yeah, that's... At least it tries to make it. Yeah, that sounds coolish, I guess. <laughs> Just non-metals, that's pretty pretty crap. Non-metals, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulphur, and selenium. That's what they are. Yeah, most of them seems are gases. Yes. Non-metals. <laughs> 
yeah, well, non-metals uh, seem like a very large kind of classification. Yeah. They're not able to conduct electricity or heat very well. And as opposed to the metals, the non-metallic elements are very brittle and cannot be rolled into wires or pounded into sheets, because obviously they'll break. The non-metals exist in two of the three states of matter at room temperature, either gases or solids. The non-metals have no metallic luster and do not actually reflect light at all. There you go. Not surprising as most of them are gases. <laughs> Speaking of gases... Halogens. The halogens. There are five non-metallic Ooh. elements found in group 17 of the periodic table. The term halogen means salt former and compounds containing halogens are called salts. There you go. They all have seven electrons in their outer shells. Uh, again, oxidation number of negative one. The halogens exist at room temperature in uh, all three states of matter. Oxidation number... That's annoying me now, what that is. You'll have to... I, kn I know it, if they've got seven electrons in their outer shells. So I, I think that means that they're not very reactive. Yeah, because they're quite stable. Yeah, they're, they're stable, yeah. The more they've got in their outer shell, the more stable they are, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I believe it is. Yeah, so the halogens... Uh, unlike apparently a lot of the other classifications exist in all forms so you've got solids of oh sorry Mike what, what's, what's that uh, iodine yeah yeah carry I, on I seem to remember uh, someone being dismissive of that as an element no I think so, so iodine and astatine uh, liquid bromine and gases are represented by fluorine and chlorine Mike your favourite classification noble gases of which there are six. You love them. These elements were considered to be inert gases until the 1960s because having an oxidation number of zero prevents the noble gases from forming compounds readily, i.e. you would probably need to put them under strict laboratory conditions to be able to get them to react. Because they all have the maximum number of electrons in their outer shell. Making them which, which, inherently stable. Yes. And the noble gases are, Mike? Helium, neon, argon, krypton, krypton factor, uh, radon and xenon. There you go. Well done. And finally, the rare earth elements. The lanthanides and actinides. The 30 rare earth elements are composed of the lanthanide and actinide series. One element of the lanthanide series and most of the elements in the actinide series are called transuranium which means synthetic or man-made. All of the rare earth metals are found in group 3 of the periodic table and the 6th and 7th periods. The rare earth elements are made up of two series of elements, the lanthanides and actinides. There we go. Recognise any of those, Mike? Uh, let's have a little look. Thorium? Um, Terbium? Mm. Europium? Yeah. <laughs> no? Uh, a, cu a couple of them I recognise, okay, but they mean okay. absolutely nothing. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. So, Mike. Groomer. To, fi to finish off the... No, you're the groomer. To finish off this uh, thrilling episode of Late Night Large, I thought we'd find out, we'd take one of these silly online quizzes to decide which element are you. Okay? Go for it. So, let's see what you come up with. Okay. Uh, I am well, I'd like to say I don't do online quizzes. Well, so you say. Okay, Mike. Go on. I am most like movie characters portrayed by Chuck Norris, Paris Hilton, Christopher Walken, Tom Hanks, or Reese Witherspoon. Clearly Chuck Norris. I had a feeling you might say that. Okay. And the next question. My vacation would most likely involve... Two weeks at Disneyland or Six Flags, wherever the hell that is. Shopping someplace exotic and expensive. Unwinding at a hot spring or being pampered in a nice hotel. I don't take vacations. Or base jumping. Uh, base jumping. Do you actually know what that means? Yeah. <sighs> My favourite colour. Blue. Shiny and metallic. Clear, steel grey or black, or glowing radioactive green? Glowing radioactive green. He knows, he knows. 
As far as employment goes, <laughs> I'm likely to be <laughs> fired. <laughs> Unemployed, but I'm not hurting for cash. Unemployed because someone else takes care of me. Uh, a corporate cog. Or your boss. Your boss. You wish. Oh, how ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Question, I could be described as... Volatile and dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. Stable, but maybe not too imaginative. Reliable and versatile. People don't notice me, but they do rely on me. Strong, but a little inflexible. Or well-liked, but easily influenced by others. Uh, I don't want to just pick one of them. I think I fall into a couple of them ca uh, categories. Just pick um, one. I'm going to go with... Third, middle one. Reliable. Reliable and versatile. Yes. What, even though it says people don't notice me, but they rely on me? Uh, well, I wouldn't agree with me, either of They those. don't notice me. No, I wouldn't agree with either yes, of those. Yes, because you're a prick. Uh, um, how about well liked but easily influenced by others? I'm not even easily influenced, so. Stable, but maybe not too imagined. Uh, go on then, that one. Okay. Well, no, strong, but a little inflexible. Oh, no, I'm not inflexible. Stable. Uh, Do the stable one. The stable one? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Which of these statements do you agree with, Mike? All of them. No, go on. Food cooked in cast iron skillet tastes better than food from a non-stick pan. The colour of most metals is boring. Diamonds are the best gem. Period. <laughs> balloons that float are better than balloons that just sit there. If something is radioactive, it is automatically cool and interesting. Last one. Uh, you prefer to spend your time in the company of strangers, with friends who share interests with you, by yourself, on your own bit in a group or crowd, or with members of your family. Friends that share, share interests. Okay. My favourite food is Lucky Charms, <laughs> Carbonised Marshmallow, uh, Food is for Losers, uh, so do they know who they're asking this to, uh, Mega Warheads Extreme Sour Candy, I get the feeling this is a US quiz, Fancy Desserts with Precious Metal Foil Decorations. Uh, I'm going to say fancy desserts. One of your favourite activities is metalworking, watching television, working science problems, making balloon animals, or shopping. TV. TV. You have completed the quiz. Mike, yes. you are... Go on. Plutonium. Okay. Plutonium is a rare radioactive metal... It is used to produce nuclear power and is an explosive in nuclear weapons. Yeah, I'm pretty explosive. The complete detonation, read ejaculation, of a kilogram of plutonium produces an explosion equal to that produced by 20,000 tonnes of chemical explosives. Yeah, I'm pretty tough, yeah. The pure metal is silver, but it turns yellowish when it tarnishes in air. Plutonium gives off enough energy from alpha decay that the metal is warm to the touch. Oh. I'm a pretty warm guy. <laughs> so now we know. We'll call you Plutonium Large from now on. I don't think we will. Get you out to Mars. No, you need to uh, you sort yourselves out. Sort your lives out, or I will do it for you. Get on Facebook, Late Night Large. Like the page. Leave some comments. Spread it like gonorrhea. Spread it like gonorrhea. So, it's good night from me. And it's good night from me. And is that Plutonium on your gums? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>